Hi, Roger Bendel here. I'm at the uh, Midwest Renewable Energy Fair in Custer, Wisconsin. I'm Marguerite Ramlow. I'm on the board of directors for the Midwest Renewable Energy Fair Association. We put on a fair every year. And oh, this year right. we expect to have over 20,000 people. This, we have been doing a fair no, since 1990. And we're all about education. Education about renewables, education about how to energize your home so that you're using less energy. And then if once you've done that, you can move on to renewable energy. So the first thing that we're really interested in educating people about is learning how to conserve energy. We have hundreds of workshops every weekend when we have the fair yearly. And every workshop is geared towards education. The Wisconsin K-12 Energy Education Program holds two graduate credit courses at the Renewable Energy and Sustainable Living Fair every year. One of those courses is for tech ed teachers, and the other is for all other general educators who'd like to learn about renewable energy. For the most part, we leave the course design up to the teachers so they can learn about what they have a specific interest in. But we do have required sessions that we have them go to. One of those required sessions is from 10 until noon on Saturday, and that's an overview of renewable energy taught by Clay Sterling, who works with the MREA. For the first hour, he will give them a lecture and a PowerPoint on the overview of renewable energy, and then he takes them on a tour of the Institute, and he shows them those applications where they're working in real life situations. And then in the evening, we have a session that's sponsored by NASCO, who's a Wisconsin educational supplies company, and they'll come in and do a session on the resources they have available for teachers to use in the classroom. But we also give the teachers some time to explore ideas and share and network with each other as well. I met up with John Root at the Energy Fair this year. He seems to always be on the lookout for new solar-powered energy devices. Well, hi, Roger. Uh, we're back here at the Midwest Renewable Energy Fair this year. And I thought I'd uh, tell you about uh, the newest LED light I found. Um, it's 108 LEDs uh, with the battery and the charge controller and the solar panel all connected together. The unit costs about $450. That includes the battery and the solar panel? It includes the battery and the solar panel and the charge controller that controls uh, the amount of voltage that goes to the battery. And how long will a battery charge last? The battery charge will last about eight hours. Uh, a little bit more in the summer, less in the winter. Any guess you can say how many lumens that would be? I do not know how many lumens it is, but it'll light up the side of a barn. So it's it only uses uh, six watts of energy, electricity. This is a Zap bike. It's one of the first Zap bikes. Uh, I bought it back in, I think, 1992. Battery powered vehicles seem to be more evident this year. Uh, maybe perhaps because I was uh, more interested in electric bikes than ever before. This is a conversion unit for an electric bike to convert your bicycle to an electric bike. And uh, it uh, comes on and off the bike in a matter of seconds. It takes about 40 seconds to uh, install it and 30 seconds to remove it. And you can carry your rear wheel, your front wheel on the rear of the bike. Uh, so you can have a electric bike ride followed by a conventional ride or vice versa. Hi, my name is Roger Newman. I'm from Kewaskum. I bought this vehicle about a year ago off the internet. I was looking for an electric motorcycle and came across Myers Motors website. They redesigned the Corbin Sparrow, which was designed originally by Mike Corbin in California. This was the fourth vehicle they developed and sold and uh, has a range of 30 miles plugs into a regular 110 volt outlet and goes 75 miles per hour. It's 3.8 cents a kilowatt to recharge, which takes about two and a half to three hours. Overall, it's less than a penny a mile for electricity to operate the vehicle. It does have a heater and defroster, windshield wiper, and it's licensed as a motorcycle but the operator does not need to have a motorcycle license to operate it. And the keynote speakers had interesting things to say, along with the introductions on what MREA is up to nowadays. And up and down our driveway coming into uh, the, uh, the MREA, uh, we have a row of trees on, which starting to fill both sides. And we have planted a tree in the honor of Dr. Caldecott.
Dr. Caldcott is a uh, physician by training, but she no longer practices. Um, and if you check out what she does right now, her current resume is, is she's a pain in the butt. <laughs> she, she, she is actually a major annoyance to corporate interest and to politicians. And we thought that that was... I present you Dr. Collicott. I couldn't think of a more beautiful award or present than having a tree planted in my honour. In fact, when I die, I'm not going to be cremated because that adds to global warming. <clears throat> I'm going to be buried in a cardboard coffin so the worms can get into me while I'm soft. No formalin because it's carcinogenic. And I, I want a tree planted on top of me. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. There's a wonderful study by a man called uh, Storm Van Leeuwen, who's a Dutchman, who did a study with Philip Smith, an American, studying a whole life cycle of nuclear power from uranium mining, milling, enriching, building the reactor, decommissioning the reactor, storing away safely for half a million years. At the moment, a nuclear power plant produces one third the amount of CO2 as a similar sized gas fire plant. Within 10 or 20 years, the CO2 emissions will equal a gas fire plant because the there's only not much uranium left, and as the quality and concentration of uranium ore declines, so you need more energy to enrich it. I'm going to walk you through that in a minute. So, Cheney et al. lie. It is inappropriate for politicians to lie about scientific facts. It's like saying those tobacco, remember, eight of them stood with their hands on their hearts before Congress, those tobacco men, and said, smoking... Most of the stuff I learnt came from the literature written by the nuclear industry in the Journal of Health Physics. That's where you find most of this stuff. We've got 40% of the world's richest uranium in my country, and by God, we're going to dig it up. Very fast, because it's worth a lot of money at the moment, $120 a pound, whereas it was only worth $20 a pound a few years ago. And to hell with future generations. Our politicians have no morality.